everyone, good morning. <clears throat> I'm Catherine Graham, and I will be your worship associate this morning. We who join in community here believe that you are special. We believe in your right to love and to be loved, your right to believe and not to believe. We think your questions are worthy of answers, no matter how long it takes to find them. We believe that this beautiful earth is sacred and that each of us can make it even better by promoting peace, justice, and thoughtfulness. Most of all, we believe that you are an integral part of our church family. And so I not only welcome you, but thank you for joining us this morning and for being such an important part of the positive energy and good works that happen within these walls and beyond. And do I have anyone who would like to light the chalice this morning? I think you always light the chalice because... Mark, would you like to come up and light the chalice as the rest of us read the words? <clears throat> we light this chalice with the embers of compassion. We light this chalice with the... We light this chalice with the radiance of joy. All right, do we have any children who would like to come down? Children of all ages. All right, thank you so much. So I'm Katie Ackerman, and I'm your relatively new Director of Religious Education. And today, uh, oh, I need the clicker. Sorry, just a sec. All right, today we're going to be reading The Little Red Hen. So I need some volunteers. Oh, oh, good. Oh, we've got lots. All right, the first one that I need is... A little red hen. Let's see. Owen, come please be the little red hen. <laughs> All right. Hold that up tall. There you go. That's the front. All right. And your name. Come on up here. Yeah. What's your name? Aiden. Aiden. Aiden is going to be our dog. All right. Hold that up. Good job. All right. Um, yeah. Why don't you come up? There we go. You can be the pig. There you go. All right, Mark, your hand's really high. You come up here, you be the cat. All right, you, most of you know the story of the little red hen. All right, now we need some chicks, so I'm going to pass out some chicks. There they are. Peep, peep. <laughs> Cat's trying to say something. All right. Oh, got to reorganize. Okay, so... If you have an animal, when you hear the name of your animal, you have to make that noise. So when I say hen, Owen, you go right on. I didn't even prep him. He just knew. All right. Pig says, very good. Cat says, good. And dog says, all right. And the chicks go, that's right. Okay. So this is the little red hen returns. Once upon a time, there was a little red hen. And she lived on the farm with all of her animal friends. This is an Andy Warhol painting of Little Red Hen. So one day, <laughs> Little Red Hen said, I need to make some bread. She said, what will I do? First, I need to plant the wheat. And so she said to the pig, pig, will you help me plant the wheat? Pig, that's right. And the pig said, not I. And then she said to the cat, will you help me plant the wheat? And the cat said, not I. And then she said to the dog, will you help me plant the wheat? Woof, woof, he says. And he said, not I. So she said, then I will plant it myself. So she did. Then she said, I have harvested the wheat, and now I need to grind it. Who will help me grind the wheat? She said to the pig, pig, very good. Pig, pig said, not I. Who will help me grind the wheat? Cat, will you help? No, not I, said the cat. Who will help me? Oh, oh, dog, will you help me? No, no, dog said, not I. All her little chicks went... Cheep, 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 we're so hungry. Okay, so it's taking a long time. So she threshes the wheat, and what do all the animals say? The pig, the cat, the dog, all say, not I, we can't help you thresh the wheat. So she goes ahead and she bakes the bread. They all say, pig, cat, meow, meow, good. Uh, dog, they all say, not I. So nobody has helped her. Oh, what is she gonna do? Oh, there we go. She looks around and she says, I remember last year, I did this. I did the exact same thing and nobody would help me. Not I, not I, not I. 
So she takes a minute and she says, last year, I just ate that with my chicks myself. But this year, I have noticed that the dog has spent all year running around and keeping the farm safe. And this year, the pig has eaten all of the rotten windfall apples in the orchard and kept it clean. And Kat, you have kept all of the rats away from eating all the wheat. And so the little red hen and the little chicks beep, 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 said, we will share with you because that's the right thing to do because we all work together. Right? And you have been busy, and sometimes you can't do everything. So the little red hen and all of the animals shared the bread. The end. Oh, nice. <laughs> all right. Ready? Thank you. OK. Now if we can make a bridge and sing our keiki off to their program. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. life. Look to this day for it is life, the very life of life. In its, in its brief course lie all the verities and realities of your existence, the bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision. Look well therefore, but today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. We clasp the hands of those that go before us. And the larger circle of all creatures. To a music so subtle and vast that no one hears it. Today I'm going to begin the sermon with a tune. So Dennis, hit the note, please. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Okay, that's enough. You get the picture. So oftentimes this is the song that we hear in society. It's all about me because doggone it, you are special. You're the most wonderful individual in the whole wide world, and you are entitled to the world. Isn't that what freedom is all about and what it means to be a rugged individual and great American, right? Great American freedom is all about the individual. And indeed, then we come up with a song called This Land is My Land. This land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest, blah, 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 blah. blah. This land was made for me and me. <laughs> Wasn't it? Isn't that how the song goes? And isn't that the reason why we have this thing called Manifest Destiny, right? Go west, young man, as far as California. It doesn't matter that those Mexicans live there already, and even before that, the Native Americans. It doesn't matter. Go west, because that's where the gold is. And don't you want to get rich quick? Isn't that what life is all about? And head further west. Go to Alaska. Doesn't matter how cold it is over there, but that's where the oil pipes are, and that's where you're going to get rich too. And that's not even far enough west. Cross the ocean. There's this beautiful paradise called Hawaii. Doesn't matter that there's already a legitimate monarch there. No matter, we'll send your troops to protect you. Just go ahead and plant those pineapples and we'll watch your back. Isn't that what America is all about? Oh yeah, absolutely. And these days, don't you just love how there's new packaging around the me, 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 I, I, I kind of mentality. Steve Jobs was so smart in knowing all of this. He knew that individualism is sexier than sex. So how did he sell it? In the form of what we call the iPod that was created over a decade ago. 
you can have all of your favorite music, all 400 or 800, whatever of them, all in one tiny device and carry it around everywhere you want to go. And there's also the iPad. If the iPod is not big enough for you, you need an iPad, right? And more recently, it doesn't matter that there's already five versions of the iPhone that came out. The 6 is bigger and better yet. In fact, there's a 6 plus plus version coming out. Don't you want that? Don't you want to pre-order it two days ago so that you could get it by September 19th, right? Before anybody else. And this latest invention, the iRack. <laughs> I need one of those cues like they have for applauses to say laugh, laugh now. All right. You guys are just as bad as the 915 service. Moving right along. So there's this whole mentality and we've created an I generation that some are dubbing the entitled generation that no longer is driving, for example, seen as a privilege, but it is a right that everybody should have. And not only is that true, but it's also a rite of passage for any teenager learning how to drive. And it's not even enough that they have a right to a driver's license. They also need a car to go along with it. Because God forbid that you'd have to carpool or share with somebody else. We want our own little iMobiles, do we not? And when it comes to religion, I think oftentimes we bought into this consumerist kind of mentality as well. I'm going to go shopping for the church that meets my spiritual needs. So we're going to go, or I'm going to go to the I church and find my spiritual nourishment there. After all, it's about my personal relationship with God, isn't it? Me and Jesus are this close, right? That it's all about, any of you heard of those praise and worship music? It's all about, I love you, Jesus. I want to be with you. I want to get down on my knees. I, 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 save me, save me. Look at me, self-realization, self-actualization, self-everythingization, right? That seems to be the culture even around church. I was so tempted, to be honest with you, to show a clip from South Park. There's a great one when um, Cartman forms his own Christian rock band. I don't know how many of you actually saw that episode, except I can't actually find even two minutes without bad words in it. Or, you know, I, I want to make it a PG kind of thing, especially for our video audience. So you'll just have to go Google it or Netflix it yourself. But needless to say, am I the only one who's concerned about this? Am I the only one who's worried that we're turning into such a narcissistic kind of society that we lose sight of those around us and whatever their needs are? When it comes to Unitarian Universalism, let's talk about that for a little bit so that you could finally squirm in your seats. Because, you know, it's okay to talk about other people, right? But when it comes to us, you know, we haven't really been all that great either, and we haven't really had such a great track record when it comes to privilege and the idea that the world owes it to us. Let me give you an example. In his book called Elite by the Reverend Mark Harris, the subtitle of it is Uncovering Classism in Unitarian Universalist History. He talks about the idea, I know, ooh. He talks about the idea that way back when, the, the, the churches in Boston, which, is a, which has a high concentration of Unitarians um, at the time, would literally take the whole summer off. And you want to know the reason for that? It's because most of the congregants there owned another home in Cape Cod. And so they want a vacation there, and they want to take their minister with them. How jealous am I, right? First of all, no one's invited me to come to their summer home yet. 
But needless to say, that says something, doesn't it? That they closed down most of the churches in Boston, yet opened up the ones in Cape Cod so that the summer people could have a place of worship. Now, what kind of message about classism does that convey to people? I know we could take a look at it now and say, oh yeah, you know, that was way back when. It certainly doesn't apply to us now. Well, I happen to be the minister of more than one UU congregation, and it probably doesn't apply to any of you. So before you come back to me and say, oh no, that's not me. I've never done that before in my life. Or maybe I should just stare at the camera at this point because I'll blame everybody watching this video right now instead of everybody who's sitting here. But there's an ethos and there's sometimes a feel of, yeah, I know these policies and these bylaws and these processes and these procedures exist, but I am exempt to it because I'm special, don't you know? And I'm a Unitarian. I practice what's called religious libertarianism, which means that I don't have to believe anything I don't want to. I don't have to do anything I don't want to. I don't have to play nice with others if I don't want to because it's all about my own spiritual experience, which is what I bring to the table. Are we squirming yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and nobody here, of course, has ever encountered that in their day-to-day -day experience serving on a team or a committee of, of people who place their needs and their own personal preferences above everyone else's. I'm so sad to hear comments from newcomers who don't stick, who tell me that, you know what? You should change your name to me, me, instead of you, you. Mm. What a conviction that is whenever I hear that. And it, it hits me hard. And it makes me think, what are we doing with our faith? And is it even our faith, or have we gone so far as to make it just a faith for a few, as Mark Harris calls it? Here's a quote that, um, uh, that he wrote in his book. The ways in which we desire to improve the human race or increase individual control over our own destinies has actually resulted in projecting our vision of the good life onto others. Therefore, our ability to be compassionate toward marginalized people is actually quite limited. We want a democratic faith that embraces all, but in our efforts to extend this liberal religion, we frequently embrace only those who are like us. So in an effort to try to change this tune of me, 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 into you, 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 it still sounds like you, 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 right? It's still eerily the same tune because the yous are really just reflections of the me's. So you may be asking yourself at this point, well, great sermon, Jonifer. I really appreciate it. The person sitting next to me really needed to hear that. <laughs> or my mother who's sitting at home really needed to hear that, right? Well, um, let me tell you something. Whenever I write a sermon, more often than not, I'm actually preaching to myself because I am just as guilty of taking advantage of privilege as anybody else. What do I mean by this? Well, as many of you know, I've been doing quite a bit of traveling, right? I've been um, a little bit all over Europe. And um, so over the years, I've accumulated a number of miles and in an effort for airline companies to try to gain my loyalty, they've come up with wonderful programs and wonderful titles, one of which is calling me an elite member, Ooh. which entitles me to all these wonderful privileges like free check luggage, which warms my heart. I'm like one of those chicks up here. My favorite phrase is cheap, 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 cheap. Right? And um, it entitles me to um, uh, get ahead of line of everybody else. So they have this pre-boarding process. So I get to cut ahead of everybody just so I could sit on the plane longer than everybody else can. <laughs> and just so I have more time to fight over the person behind me with the freaking knee defender on. So I can't recline. Right? 
So that, those are all the privileges I get for being an elite member. And I am so proud of that until one day the CFO of said airline, which I won't name because I vowed not to do any more product placements during my sermon, um, until he came out and said, these elites are so entitled. We take away one thing, like we cut the almonds in half, and they start complaining. <clears throat> or if we don't just put out the right linens, or if they're not washed properly, then they start complaining. And most of the people in the frequent fire programs, they actually complained about the CFO and said, how dare he? Doesn't he realize we're good paying loyal customers that we're entitled to these free upgrades and free this and that and the other? But then I kind of took a step back and I thought, well, he may have a point there. Maybe I have been too entitled. Maybe I have gotten this through my head that the company owes it to me, that somehow the world owes me something. That when I take a look at the bigger picture, the truth of the matter is most people in this world have not even had the opportunity to fly, let alone almost five towns around the globe probably like I've done in a year, right? Most people haven't even had that experience. Did you know, for example, that only 25% of Americans actually own a U.S. passport. Did you know that? So if you're one of them, you're actually part of the few, the proud, and the elite that actually own a passport. And how many of us have actually traveled outside the country before or off island? And how many know that there's a lot who haven't had a similar experience? We are quite privileged. And so the question is, how do we build a bridge? And how do we shift this tune so that it would sound completely different? That it's not just about me, me, or necessarily even about you, you. But can we sing a different tune of we, oui, we? Oui, or it's all French to you. We, oui, we, oui, mademoiselle. <laughs> right? How can we do that? Well, in order to do that, this is the ultimate teaser. I'm so naughty you'll have to come back next week because we have two more sermons about the whole subject of we is greater than I. So um, be sure to come back. And in the meantime, I want to leave you with this thought. Instead of asking, what does the world owe me? Which in my opinion, the answer is nothing. We should really frame it as we owe the world everything. Without the world, we wouldn't be living today. We wouldn't have life. Without the plants, animals, and our parents, or whoever cared and nurtured us when we were younger and helpless and vulnerable, we wouldn't be here today. The world doesn't owe us. We owe the world. So let's start repaying some of that debt, shall we? Maybe so.